most lesbians would prefer to conceal the fact that they are lesbian because yeah, because, their jobs, yes, their because they're not accepted. I think that if more people did have the courage to, um, I mean, I don't not go about with a great big placard on I am a lesbian, <laughs> but if any friends aren't ask them, if they, or if they heard a discussion and lesbians were um, in one firm I worked for, there was a discussion and. I got hot and bothered because of things that were said and flared up in defence and they said, oh, would anybody think you were, you were a lesbian yourself? And I said, well, I am. What are you going to do about it? You know, they sort of looked at me and said, oh, are you? Well, you're all right. <laughs> it didn't make any difference afterwards. There was no sort of talking in corners or not talking to me. They sort of surprised at the beginning and certain jokes that, are, that have been told before were told in front of me again but uh, it didn't make all that difference and I think if people had the courage to do that I didn't do it from courage, I did it from temper but people, if more people would admit it I think that it would be much much better because people would become accustomed to the fact, become accustomed to the fact that um, we're ordinary people <laughs> They are all women at this party, lesbians. They are all women who, as homosexuals, are officially better off than men. There's no law to stop them consenting privately to be lovers. There's no legal frown on their relationships, no parliamentary discussion about their behaviour. And yet, for women who love women, unqualified acceptance by our society still does not exist. We are heterosexually geared. Naturally, propaganda for love, for sex, for conformist lives is all aimed at women with men. The idea of two women feeling about each other in the same way as a normal couple disturbs that happy concept. And so lesbians receive the minority treatment, intolerance, suspicion, often disgust. The fact that they're legally free to live as they like makes little difference. Steve Rogers and her girlfriend don't often walk down a street for pleasure. There's too much risk involved. Risk of public mockery, undisguised amazement, crude jokes. Many lesbians, of course, aren't so aggressively masculine as Steve, and for them it's not so bad. But for Steve, who's 24, and whose whole instinct cries out to her to feel and act like a man, her appearance makes her constantly vulnerable. She's been to many doctors. They've told her to accept herself, accept what she is. She's done that, but there's little reward in the acceptance, and it's always been the same. Her conflict with society has resulted in Borstal and even prison. The suffering began when she was a child. My mother had me when she was 15, and my father was American, and uh, she only knew him a few days. And, and uh, then when I was six, she got married to my stepfather, and he didn't, he didn't accept me as somebody else's, having somebody else's child. And um, to the day they were married, they spent the evening in, the, in my grandmother's house, and my mother had pumped it into me so much that I had to call him dad. And I met him at the top of the stairs and I called him dad. And he knocked me from the top of the stairs to the bottom. And uh, after that, my mother used to dress me in a dress and send me off to school. And I used to stand on the doorstep and cry. And uh, they couldn't find out what it was or anything. And I'd always play, play with boys' toys and that. And, uh, I'd always like little tr pairs of trousers, so my grandmother started dressing me in boys' clothes, a little pair of trousers and that, and I used to run off to school and enjoy myself. And then they had to get permission from the education people to um, let me wear trousers to school. But when I realised it most was um, when I started getting attracted to girls when I was about 12 or 13. What happened? You know, I used to want to take them home. And when I took them home, I used to get really upset and mad if my mother called me she. Because I used to go with these girls and make out that I was a boy. And then she let me down when I got home by saying she and calling me a girl's name. Can you remember how you felt towards these girls? I used to get involved very quick, you know. I used to think that I was in love with every one of them that I was with. Did you have physical relationships with yeah. them as well? At 12? Yeah. 
How do they feel about that? They didn't know, really, you know, because um, I wasn't all that old enough to have sex properly with them. Was... But when I did get older, um, when I was 15, when I was 16, sorry, um, I met this girl and um, I was with her for six months and I got engaged to her. I really forgot that I was a woman. And uh, she thought she was pregnant. Because <sighs> there's some things that a lesbian you know, can use. And I got away with using one of those. She and she didn't know the difference, no. And uh, the next thing I know, her mother kept on about us getting married. So I thought, oh, I'd better get out of it, you know, because I knew I couldn't get married to her. And so then I hopped it, and next thing I know, the police are after me. The girl thinks she's pregnant, and they're taking me to court for breach of promise and that. They took me to court, and then it all came out that I was a girl. And what do you think it is that is the basis for the attitude there is in our society towards lesbians? I just think they don't understand it and they don't want to understand it. They just push it aside and just make fun of you all the time. Is it possible to explain um, what it's all about, do you think? You know, you say people don't understand it. Well, they don't, obviously. Mm. Do you, how do you think you can explain this to people? If you were asked to do so, I'm asking you now. Can you try to describe what it's all about? To make out that it isn't something that we should disapprove of? No, I think people should just, you know, if, if they want, want to get to know about it, they should uh, ask you about it and not criticise it first. Would you mind people asking you about no, it? No, I wouldn't mind if I thought people were asking me because they wanted to understand it. I wouldn't mind that at all. I'd explain it to them, but. Can if they just criticise you first. How much chance do you think there is of having a lasting relationship as a lesbian? I don't think lesbian relationships last long at all. Why not? Two or three years at the longest. I, I don't know. You know. I had one relationship that was with a nurse. She, her name was Anne. And I was with her for three years, but then it just we sort of drifted apart. Do you know why that was? I think they st women that can have children and that they start seeing people with babies and that, and they just long for a baby and it's, you so, just sort of drift apart and they just go to men. Would you like to have a baby? How, how do you mean have a baby? Well, would you like... I'd like to be the father of a baby or act as the father of a baby. Would Anne like to have a baby? Yeah. And would you think it would be a good idea for her to have a baby so that you could be the father, so-called father? Yeah, we'd love to adopt one, but I don't think there's much chance of that. The fact that what we are and we've been in prison and that. I sometimes wonder what will happen to lesbians in old age. Does it become, do you think it'll become more difficult? Yeah, I think so. That's why I'm finding it difficult now. But you're only 24. You get, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's showing, isn't it? I mean, if I was a man, I'd be shaving. And that's one of the things that they notice on you, in your voice. Do you have any desire at all to be f more feminine, to be more no. like a woman? No. I do everything I could to, you know, be a man. Have I you think it would make me more happier if I was a man. Have you never felt, um, ever in your life, any desire for men to treat you as men normally do treat women? No, not at all. I hate it if a man treats me as a girl. You know, if, I mean, some men, they stand by and let a woman go first. Well, if a man did that to me, you know, I'd feel insulted. Well, what sort of relationship do you manage to have with men? As another man. I used to go around with a lot of fellas, you know, as another man. And they believed you were another man, yeah. did they? But no, it's just hopeless. I just can't get them to accept it. And it just makes you feel, well, you just as well be in prison, because it's a sort of prison anyway. I mean, having to shut yourself in all the time, not go out, because you, you're worried about what people are going to say to you, and they're going to laugh at you and everything. Do people actually laugh at you yeah. so you can hear? They laugh in your face now, as well as behind your back. Does your mother know about you? Yeah. What does she think? She just, just thinks it's disgusting. She can't accept it. You try to explain to her? Yeah, and the doctors try to explain, but she just 
thinks I can just go and put a dress on and that's it. So if, is it ever possible for you to be happy? I don't think so. Unless people accept the fact. Can you ever remember being happy? No. Not really happy. I've laughed and joked about it, but I've never been really happy. Do you think you ever will be able to be happy? The way things are now, no. And do you think the way things are now will ever change? It could be, but not to that extent, I don't think so. When I say I'm not happy, I don't mean I'm not happy with Anne or anything like that. I'm happy when I'm with Anne on my own, when we're indoors, like. But when I'm out, I'm just not happy. I'm just looking around all the time and noticing people are stopping and staring and laughing. You can't be happy not in an atmosphere like that. So what's the point of your life, really? None at all. A comfortable house in Wandsworth, indistinguishable from thousands of homes owned by married couples. It's where Julie Switzer and Cynthia Reed, a lesbian couple, have lived for four years. For them, as for many lesbians, their relationship appears to be a permanent one, their life together established. A domestic life which began as conventionally as any normal married couple when they fell in love. Homosexual practices may not be approved of, homosexual love cannot be denied. Well, for me, it was um, not my first love affair. I had been in love with um, a school teacher and I'd been in love with another girl. Uh, it was the same feeling. It, it is, you know, the feeling of being in love. I'm sure it's exactly the same for men and for women, a feeling of deep emotion towards someone. And um, with me, it happened quite suddenly. I had, in fact, only known Julie a few days. Uh, at the time, I was very lonely and very depressed. And I think this probably helped. I think if you're in that state where you feel ready to love us, ready to love someone, you know, you're, you're virtually looking for someone to give your love to. I think then it can happen very easily. And it did for me, it happened very quickly and very easily. And I just knew that was it, you know, I didn't have to, to think about it really. It just happened. We both expected that in order to love somebody you had to know them for a long time. Mm. But in fact, we, we felt we knew each other almost immediately. We could talk about yes. almost anything. Yes. And uh, we just got on extremely well right from the very beginning. Who told who first that you loved each other? I think I was the first one to actually I think, yes, say I think that she I was loved much you. Older than I was at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I think largely because I felt that um, Julie perhaps expected me to take more initiative. I was, I'm five years older than she is. and having already been in love with someone else. So, you know, that was probably the only reason that I mm. felt it was, you know, for me to speak first. Was it romantic? Oh, yes, I think it was very romantic. Yes, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I just don't see the, any difference between a normal couple falling in love and, and two women falling in love or two men falling in love. Um, it's as romantic as the two people make it. We nearly always want to be together if we can, but yes. so there's no question of what were you doing last night. Anyway. In fact, we don't seem to manage to spend a great deal of time together in the evenings, but, uh, mm. you know, we, we live, I think, very full lives, and I think this probably helps. Um, we don't intentionally sort of wrap ourselves up in one another and exclude everyone else, as some lesbian couples do seem to. Uh, I think this is a mistake, as far as I'm concerned. Being lesbian is simply one small, well, one fairly big part of my life, but it's only part of my life, and uh, there are other important parts of my life that I want to follow up. How do you organise your domestic life together? Is one of you the sort of dominant figure, like the man, or does one of you take the decision? How, how, how do you work it out? I think Cynthia is naturally a bit more socially dominant than I am. A little, she yeah. Te she tends to... Um, <laughs> deal with the bills and um, you don't decide so much now as you used to when and where we go out and that sort of thing I used to leave a lot to Cynthia I think again this was just at, at first mm. until we were used to each other but now we, we take most things between us it so happens that she likes studying so she studies in her spare time and I like decorating and gardening so I do that as for the other things the cooking and the housework well <coughs> Neither of us very much <laughs> likes doing them. both avoid it <laughs> If you go out together for dinner, say, who pays the bill? 
Oh, you do. Well, I do. Oh. I, I usually deal with all the financial side, but this doesn't mean I'm paying with my money. I mean, as far as expenditure goes, you know, we're both in good jobs. We're both earning uh, reasonable pay, so we expect to pay um, you know, fair shares. But actually dealing with checks and paying bills and um, restaurant bills and so on, I usually deal with it simply, I suppose, because I've been doing it uh, for some time before I met Julie. I, was, I left mm. home considerably before she did. And again, if you go out to dinner, would you choose a place that, um, in a heterosexual's view, would be a sort of romantic place to go to dinner with quiet lights and candles and so forth? If we wanted um, a special dinner for, for some occasion, we would, yes. Uh, candlelight dinners we quite enjoy. Um, <laughs> but we can afford them. You do seem to be a particularly happy and lucky and well-adjusted couple. Do you think, on behalf of less lucky lesbians and yourself, there's anything that, that you would like done, improved in the way of the attitude of society towards you as a whole? Mm. Yes, I, I think it's more incumbent on the lesbians themselves rather than on society. I think society is becoming prepared to accept all kinds of different types of behaviour and not to get so emotionally upset about them as they did in the past. Mm. But I think that many lesbians could help themselves uh, first by ceasing to be obsessed with their own lesbianism, that is, regarding it simply as a part of their personality and not the whole of it. Mm. And also to be more outgoing, to, in effect, to expect acceptance from people, because I'm sure that, to a certain extent at any rate, one gets the reaction from people that one does expect. And if one expects acceptance from people, there's a higher chance than otherwise that you will get it. The swashbuckling approach, the heartiness, the thumping stride, the tough man's clothes. These things are natural to some lesbians, but mostly unacceptable to people outside that world. This means that for lesbians who want to relax in the kind of clothes and the kind of way that make them happy, there are few places to go. One of them is a club in Chelsea, a place where there's no longer any need to pretend. There they can dance, drink, flirt, make friends, discuss their problem with others who will understand. And it isn't just in public places that life is made more difficult for them. <laughs> where, where does the discrimination come? Is it about jobs or friends or going to pubs or, or where well, and when? In jobs it? and, well, to some extent, in your friends. It depends on your friends. I mean, I'm lucky all my straight friends know and they don't worry. They accept me for what I am, because mostly because they knew me before they knew I was gay. But. Um, in, the, in a job, I, I think it can be very difficult. I've lost one job through it, although I find it hard to prove. But I, I have had jobs with very respectable institutions, and, and, <laughs> and they, they don't mind, you know, they accept me for what I am, even in as far as doing youth work. Why, for instance, do you all have to come here to meet all the time? Why can't you go to an ordinary pub or an ordinary pub? Um, well, it's very difficult. I, <laughs> well, I suppose... Um, Perhaps my feelings don't, um, aren't the sort of general ones, but I just, I like to relax and I like to be in a world which isn't particularly dominated by men. I like to be able to go to the bar and buy a drink. I like to be able to sit there and not have some man come to try to pick me up, which happens the whole time. If I go to a normal pub, I just happen to like a society where everyone is really equal, quite apart from being lesbian, which, I mean, whatever the word means. I just like a society where everybody's equal. Do you find that it's possible to go to an ordinary pub or an ordinary restaurant with a girl and behave in a relaxed manner? Well, not really, no, I don't, because um, all the time you're wondering what the other one's going to say and you have to um, be very careful because if you think the world of the person you're with and she thinks the world of you, you're talking to her all the time and um, you can't go on to her and say, well, look, darling, pass me the sauce or something like that. Everybody's going to look. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. It, down here, the atmosphere is so different. You know, everybody's relaxing and uh, 
Well, they're dancing together, whereas yeah. if you went to a normal, um, say, a dance hall where there were men as well, then if two women got up to dance together, they'd immediately think, well, you know, there's a couple. <laughs> and down here, you know, it's just different. You know, I, I sort of resent... It's because of society that we have to sort of congregate underground. It's ludicrous. I don't want to... I mean, the people I like generally happen to be heterosexual, the people I love best. But um, since we're forced to think about in sexual terms the whole time, once force come underground like this, it's, it's a whole fault to the other people, I think. Do you think you ought to be allowed to go anywhere you like and behave as you like? Yes. I mean, you should be allowed to, I think. I mean, um, the, the homosexual bill has gone through it nearly, and although we haven't had one, you know, ever against us, um, I think we should be allowed to go where we like, dressed in what we like, and be accepted generally by society. Would you all rather be ordinary? No, no. I, no. I don't think... Well, really and truly, we didn't have any choice, did we? No. I think we are oh, what yes. we are because we are. Oh, but we yeah, haven't got the choice for the simple reason we can suppress it and marry you can't. and have a home. You can't. And yes, you can. You, you can definitely get married, have a home, and to all outward people, you can appear to be normal. And yet, by God, what, what do you do to yourself? I mean, you, you well, destroy I yourself. Yeah? I, couldn't I, do you destroy yourself. I could no more get and married. Why should you do that? Yes, but these lesbians understand how marriage might destroy them. Others find out too late, after they have married and tried to live normally. This housewife has been married 20 years. She has two sons. She loves them, looks after them, is a good mother and dutiful housekeeper. But she's also a lesbian. For 14 years, she struggled against her instincts, was faithful to her husband and family. It's for their sake that she doesn't want to be recognized. In her case, by trying to appear normal, she has made greater problems for herself. To be homosexual is difficult enough. To be trapped by so-called normal marriage doubles the unhappiness. She keeps up the struggle. But what are the hardest things to bear? Well, it's family <clears throat> and all that goes with it. Um, having children, while they're small, you might be able to string along and present a normal sort of married front to your neighbours. But when one's children grow up, one has to tell them. I don't believe in keeping things secret. I think they find out anyway. So sooner or later you're faced with the task of having to tell your sons that you are in fact a queer. And you find that you get yourself in a, an emotional state where you're prepared to leave your family. You find somebody whom you do love and who loves you. And um, everything is wonderful and then suddenly the other woman realizes that if indeed you do set up a house hold or uh, make a home together she is going to break up your marriage she's also going to break up your family and indeed she cannot be sure whether after a few months or so you have not some urgent longing to want to go back to your family have you ever actually faced having to make this decision between a woman and staying with your husband yes what did you decide I decided to go. I was perfectly prepared to do so. In fact, I was once looking for a flat. I was going to take my younger son with me because I think when one is 14, and he's been through a tough time, of course, um, one needs one's mother still. But as it always happens, or always seems to happen to me at any rate, um, you know, they can't take it the other women. Their possessiveness is so tremendous that the thing breaks up because you're not acceptable as a married woman. You have got a family, you belong to somebody else and even if you deny belonging to your husband, you cannot deny that you belong to your children. Indeed, you don't want to deny that you belong to your children. You visualize a kind of existence where you can live your life with your chosen partner and yet still participate in the life that your children need, lead. Even though they may get married, you want to see their grandchildren, and this is something your partner cannot accept. Evidently, they cannot accept this. So is that why, is that why you're still here? Yes, indeed. Do you cook for your husband? Yes, I do. Do you sleep with him? No, I do not. So what's your relationship with your husband consist of? Well, it tends to drift towards a kind of friendship now, not a companionship, even because as it so happens, this is of course pure chance, we share nothing in common, we have no interests. He's very keen on sport, I'm not. Do you think you will leave him one day for a woman? Yes, I hope so.
It sounds cruel, doesn't it? A cold-hearted because he said a very rough deal. I realise that, but the kind of life we are leading now is only designed to distress him further. He has no hope of ever re-establishing the relationship that it was before he left. And um, I can see no hope for him or for me, for that matter, really. I may have to wait until I'm born again. Do the neighbours know about you here? I don't know, and I don't care. Um, my neighbours must think me an odd bird. Anyway, because I'm different, I know. But I don't care what they think. The only reason why I would care was in case it should injure my husband or the children. Do you really not care what people think? No, I don't. No. Doesn't it ever hurt you? It hurts me when they, leer, when they laugh and when they sneer. Do they do that in front of you? Oh, yes, indeed they do. This is something that people cannot understand. Um, they think that being a homosexual is something odd. They think it is uh, filthy, perhaps even, and disgusting, which it isn't, of course. There is nothing, nothing at all extraordinary in being a homosexual, any more than there is in being a heterosexual. It's, it's, a, it's a sneering that I can't get, that I don't dig, as they say, and the laughing. The funny speculations. I wonder what they do in bed with each other, you know? Have you got a girlfriend at the moment? Yes. Are you in love with her? Yes, of course. How long have you known her for? Three months. Is it a good relationship that might last? I thought it was, but what I've told you before is true of this relationship too. We discussed it all, we were very truthful with each other, very honest. We thought we could make something of this. We both believe in absolute love. And then, you know, one feels one is there, one has arrived. Paradise is just around the corner. You think you've got the key to unlock the door. But then suddenly she realized that I had a family, which she knew, of course, beforehand. I mean, she knew this as a fact. But the implications were suddenly revealed to her. Should she break up my family now at this stage? Or should she not? No, she doesn't want to do that. And even if she does, will I want to go back to my family later on? So suddenly I found myself again with empty hands, wondering why in hell I was ever born. And there isn't anything I can do. I can only look forward to another 20 years of life, perhaps 25, if I'm unlucky enough to live as long as that. Never finding what I want. And living with a man who has no hope of ever being able to establish a kind of relationship that he wants with me. Nothing, in fact. Nothing but the wilderness without love.